Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with a new headphone amp that came in from Waveborn last week. This, is, this one is called the Ultimator Headphone Amplifier Prototype Number 1. And I did want to point that out that this is a prototype. It is not in production yet and um, this is sort of an experimental amp. It's a new design that hadn't been tried before and it's primarily just a headphone amp. And um, because it is a prototype, the cosmetics of it aren't perfect, the paint, a uh, few other things, but those will all be worked out before this goes into production. So um, those things are kind of last on the priority list right now. The number one thing is getting the sound and the features right and then you know the final cosmetics all that comes in last before it goes into production but anyway this amp was loaned to me by Anatoly from Waveborn and uh, the current price has not been established yet like I said this is a prototype uh, but this amp was handmade in Austin Texas and it is an OTL type of tube amp and you can see the picture of it behind me. I will hold the amp up in a few minutes, give you a closer view of the front and back, but I won't be holding it for very long. This amp is large and it is very heavy. So um, anyway, I wanted to talk about the amp a little bit. This is an OTL type, which means output, transform or less and um, opposed to the other type of tube amp would be output transformer coupled and OTL amps uh, can have beautiful sound they're very rich and um, and just very a little bit on the warm side of neutral beautiful sound but OTL amps usually uh, work very well with high impedance dynamic drivers but um, they don't work with all headphones. They can uh, significantly change the sound of low impedance dynamic driver headphones usually adding more bass and they usually don't work well with planar magnetic headphones especially the harder to drive planar magnetic headphones because OTL amps usually can't produce enough power. Well not enough power they easily produce the voltage that's the thing about OTL amps, they produce plenty of voltage, but they usually don't produce enough current to drive your harder to drive OT or um, planar magnetic headphones. And that was the goal of this, to have the sound, the warm, beautiful sound of an OTL amp, but yet have enough power to drive even hard to drive planar magnetic headphones. I've reviewed some other OTL type amps in the past from Felix Audio and from um, Waveborn and they did they both do very well with some of the easier to drive planar magnetics like um, the Kennerton planar magnetics for example or the new uh, newer Hi-Fi Man Aria the Stealth version is a lot easier to drive than the older versions and most OTL amps will do pretty good with those, but they won't do well with the harder to drive, like the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, the um, Edition XS, the Ananda, some of those, or the older Aria. The, most OTL amps will not do a good job of driving those headphones. The reason why is they don't produce enough current and when they don't produce enough current the bass can fall really flat. The bass can um, lose weight, it can lose dynamics, and it can sound muddy. So the goal of this amp according to Anatoly was to be a OTL amp that can provide enough power to drive even the hard to drive planar magnetic headphones such as the Hi-Fi Man HE560 which isn't probably it's not as power hungry as the HE6 but I don't have an HE6 I'm hoping to get one someday because it's the ultimate uh, test of an amp's power but um, for now I have the HE560 which needs quite a bit of power and the HE400SE which also needs a lot of power to sound right. If it doesn't get enough current, the bass just almost disappears on that headphone. So anyway, um, about this amp. 
it has four sets of inputs so it has a switch on the front you can flip back and forth between the four different inputs which is really nice um, three of those are RCA inputs and one is an XLR three pin XLR inputs okay I do want to point out that this amp is single ended this is not a balanced amp and in my opinion balanced is not necessary with tube amps the purpose of balance is to double the voltage and voltage is not an issue with tube amps the reason for the XLR inputs is basically a convenience feature so you can use the XLR outputs of your DAC or whatever the source is I know most DACs the XLR outputs have better measurements than the RCA outputs so this way you can use the XLR or you know if that's just what you have say you've got a DAC with two outputs and you're running the RCA to another amp you can run the XLRs to this okay so anyway and then headphone outputs you can see on the front in the photo behind me it has two headphone outputs one is your standard 6.3 millimeter single ended and the other is a four pin XLR but once again this is not a balanced output it's putting out the same uh, amount of voltage and current as the 6.3 it's just for convenience if you have a cable on your headphone with a four pin XLR you can use that plug out of convenience and not have to switch cables on your headphone which is really nice when comparing amps because if you're trying to compare one amp with a 6.3 output and the other with an XLR you either got to switch cables or use an adapter when switching back and forth so uh, anyway on the rear of this unit there is a switch that has five positions and the five positions control the um, output power of this amp from the headphone outputs the first two positions are intended for planar magnetic headphones uh, the first one would be for easy to drive planar I'm sorry I have to back up the five outputs on the back the positions on the switch the first two are for dynamic headphones uh, the first one is for easy to drive and uh, your low impedance dynamic headphones the second position is for your harder to drive less efficient or your high impedance dynamic driver headphones then the next three positions are or were intended for planar magnetic headphones depending on um, how hard to drive they are but I've been speaking to uh, Anatoly and this might be reduced to one because there doesn't really seem to be a need for all three so um, anyway so instead of going with this five-way switch the next version of this may go to a variable um, attenuator like the um, power amp plus from Waveborn that I reviewed oh, a couple months ago probably it had an attenuator on it to adjust the output and I really like that because it was really easy to adjust from real sensitive headphones to headphones that needed a lot of power so um, so that might be this five-way switch might be switched out for a variable attenuator it's a knob you know where you can do a continuous adjustment so anyway this amp and this is the really unusual part about this amp most OTL amps are low powered usually a half a watt per channel or under and because they just can't pr uh, produce the current to put out power higher than that but anyway this one is rated at 4 watts per channel into either 16, 32 or 64 ohms and that's part of the reason for the switch on the back is switching depending on how many ohms your headphones are but anyway and this amp is full uh, class, class A output it's 100% class A output it doesn't switch into class B or AB or anything like that uh, because of that it does put off some pretty significant heat I'll talk about that in a few minutes anyway this amp is pretty large it's 12.5 inches wide 
It's 11 inches deep, including the knobs on the front and the back, and it's about 6.5 inches tall, which would be to the top of the transformer and to the top of the tubes. It weighs in at 17 pounds, so this amp is quite heavy. Like I said, I won't be holding it up too long, but I'm going to do that now. I'm going to try to give you a look at the amp, and um, you hold it up here. I'll show you the front of it first. Um, starting at your right, you've got the power on and off switch. Then you've got your 4-pin XLR output, you've got your 6.3 millimeter output, you've got your um, input selection, and you've got your volume knob. And uh, I'll give you a look at the top here, at the tubes and um, the transformer. And if you noticed in the when you saw that, the paint's a little bit rough, but these things will be worked out in uh, later models. I did want to also show you that what's the big difference between this and the older Wayborn amps is this is in an all, a new all-aluminum chassis, and it has cooling fins across one end. And that is pretty necessary with this amp because it, it gets pretty warm even at idle, or maybe more so at idle. Anyway, um, Try to give you a look at the back here. Across the back you've got your four sets of inputs. You've got three RCA inputs and the one three pin set of three pin XLR inputs. Then you've got your power output switch that I spoke about earlier with your five positions and then you've got your 120 volt AC in and a ground connection if needed. And uh, let me give you one more look at the top of this. Um, I forgot to write down the types of tubes so you can uh, see that right there actually. They're labeled on top. So anyway, um, I've had this about a week and I've actually put quite a bit of time in on it. And sound wise, I would describe this um, pretty typical of OTL amps. Or, it's um, got a slightly on the warm side of neutral sound, but a very rich, creamy sound. Uh, very, uh, almost lush, but it's just, um, to me, it's beautiful. I love the sound of OTL amps, and this one is not disappointing at all. I mean, that was the goal of this amp, to have that type of sound. That's why I've really been into tube amps lately. I hadn't even heard of tube amp until a couple of years ago, and the more I hear of tube amps, the more I'm liking tubes, and I know they don't measure as well as solid state, but um, I'm finding out measurements aren't everything. There's a lot more to audio than just measurements, because things that measure perfect lately um, have been sounding kind of dry, kind of lifeless and lacking body to me. So anyway, becoming a big fan of two maps. So anyway, um, the detail and clarity of this is exceptional. It's clean and detailed as, as any amp I've heard to this time, maybe even more so. I'll know that with by the time I do my final review on this, put some more time in, I'll give you a little more detail about the sound, but right now, I mean, it just sounds so clean, and just every last detail comes out, and I'm kind of blown away with it by, you know, actually. Um, the sound stage is very large, has very good width, and um, good height but it more than anything what really stands out is the depth it just has a really deep three-dimensional sound stage I hear things in layers different layers and distance not only to the sides I hear in different layers but out front I hear in different layers and this uh, amp the sound stage is as good or better than anything I've heard to this point um, Actually, my favorite amp up to this point was the Power Amp Plus from Wayborn that I reviewed a couple months ago, which is actually a transformer coupled amp. And I just absolutely loved the sound of that. I rated it when I did my uh, year-end review at um, 
the end of 2021 that was my number one amp and this amp is every bit as good as that one sound wise or maybe even better I did get a chance to compare the two back and forth a little bit and this is they're very close in sound um, like this one that one has exceptional clarity a very warm uh, rich sound and a very large sound stage and this one does all those things but sounds made a little bit even slightly more warm but not lacking not missing any detail at all so anyway um, the big thing about this though is the OTL amps I've heard before just could not power harder to drive planar magnetic headphones and this one so far has had absolutely no problems with any headphone I've thrown at it I hooked up the Hi-Fi Man HE 560 which is very inefficient and I think about 50 45 or 50 ohms and it drives that with absolutely no problems whatsoever very deep powerful bass uh, for that headphone it's not known as a bassy headphone but that headphone went underpowered the bass can sound really thin and I didn't have that issue at all with this amp. This amp easily drives the HE560 and the HE400SE which is a lower I think that one's 25 or maybe even 20 ohms or something but it's a headphone that if it doesn't get enough current the bass just um, it's really thin and um, no, it's, it loses dynamics, it loses impact, and it, it can sound really muddy, and the bass sounds fantastic on that headphone. So this amp, the first OTL amp that I found that can drive those headphones without any problems whatsoever. Um, I did mention earlier that this thing gets hot it is a class a amp and even at idle class a amps actually use the same amount of power at idle and if you're not using your headphones if there's no output if you're not listening to it it can actually get a little bit warmer because all the heat is being dissipated instead of going out through your headphones so anyway um on the cooling the cooling fins are only on one end of this amp within about five minutes the cooling fins are hot enough that you can not leave your hand on it you can touch it but only for a few seconds and it starts getting very uncomfortable so I didn't actually measure it yet I've got a infrared heat gun thing I can measure with I'll do that before I do my full review but anyway you can't leave your hand on the cooling fins after the amps been on about five minutes and within about an hour even the other end of the amp is hot enough you can't leave your hand on it so the thing I was told that it's running it idles at about hundred and fifty watts so um, of input power so it is dissipating that hundred and fifty watts so you can you know in comparison an older incandescent light bulb of 150 watts it puts off some pretty serious heat and that's about the same place you'd be with this so does put off some heat so it needs a little bit of room around it a little room above it and you know you don't want to you know you can obviously you can't stack another component on top of this because of the transformer and tubes but you want a little space up to your neck shelf and some air space around this amp because of the heat <coughs> excuse me um, so anyway um, this amp like I said prototype it will I don't know how much detail you could see in uh, the video like I said the, the paint needs you know a little bit of cosmetic work the um, the uh, oh the four pin XLR uh, connection on the front is slightly crooked and you can see the hole behind it just a little bit but like I said all those things will be worked out before this goes into production but um, Anatoly does sell some of these pre-production units um, I think you can find them on eBay or on his uh, website on uh, well he's got a page on Facebook called Waveborn so anyway um, you can if you want I think some of these uh, pre-production units are available for sale and 
when he sells it, those, it just helps him, you know, uh, afford to go on and experiment and, you know, create new models or new modifications, whatever. So, anyway, um, bottom line, this is very likely could be the best sounding headphone amp I've heard to this day. So, um, definitely, uh, Waveborn is going in the right direction with this. I'm very impressed and every unit just seems to be getting a little bit better you know he's um we're kind of working together i've reviewed several of his amps now and making small changes refinements and all that uh, because i think he was more into speakers that sort of thing i'm into headphones and i'm trying to help him find you know the the best features and best you know the best amp possible for headphone use so anyway um i'll get back to you in a few weeks with um uh, probably be more like a month because i've got a pretty um uh, i still have to work full time i can't do this you know don't make a living doing this so <clears throat> excuse me still have a daytime job so anyway i'll get back to you with my full review but for right now i'm really really liking this amp so Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we are up to, I think, 17.6 thousand members over at the Headphone Experience on Facebook. I think we're growing by about, oh, probably 25, 30 members a day. It's just crazy how fast the Facebook group has been growing lately. So I guess a lot of people are getting into headphones. Uh, once again, thanks for watching my video.